Well, well, good morning to you. Welcome back to Y254 TV. This is Y in the morning and as well says it, we get to crash on all queens. And in this week's segment of Strength of a Woman, we get to highlight Helen Gazoni Gidinji, who is a fashion entrepreneur running garment like Garment of Grace. Karibu sana. Asante. I hope I said it well. Yes, Garments of Grace. <laughs> okay, yes. I was like, is it Garment of Grace or Garment by Grace? Yeah, a lot of people get it mixed up, but it's Garments of Grace. Karibu sana. Asante sana. Thank you for making time for us. I'm glad to be so here. So let's just start right there. Okay. Why did you choose the name Garment of Grace? Oh, uh, well, I didn't choose it. Mm -hmm. I, I think I was given the name Garments of Grace. Oh, yes. interesting. You want I to tell us the background story? Yes, sure. Okay. I had the idea of what I wanted to do, and then I didn't know what name to use. So I started brainstorming. I was writing names on a list of paper, and I was like, oh, this sounds nice. This sounds nice. And then the name Garments of Grace just came, and it sounded perfect. It was in line with what the business is about, and I liked it, and I went with it. So tell us, what is Garment of Grace? So Garments of Grace is a modest fashion brand. And our aim is to deliver graceful, timeless, and feminine pieces to women. Yeah. You actually look the part. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, times when you hear you're meeting someone who's in the fashion spaces. I don't know why we have this much expectation about people. Uh -huh. So when, when, when did this passion for fashion begin? What's the journey behind okay. Uh I think... My journey with the love for fashion started when I was a little girl. I always thought I'd be a model. I, mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought I'd be on the runway. Mm -hmm. And then, and I tried out for modeling. I did, I, um, after high school, I did some auditions. I went to some modeling agencies, but I was always told, you're either too big, then I was bigger in size. You're either too big mm -hmm. or you're too short. Mm -hmm. So my dreams for modeling were killed. And and then for some time, I was I was not sure what I wanted to do, but I knew I loved clothes. I knew I loved good clothes. Mm -hmm. I liked looking nice. And and then I think the whole creating of clothes started when I was in uni. I think around second year or third year there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where the inspiration came. I met a girl in school. I really used to look at her and I'm like, this girl looks so 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 nice. Like her dresses are always on point. She's always well dressed, her dresses are colorful, they are fashionable, and I was so curious. So one time I approached her after, after class, I was like, hey, how are you? I really like your dresses, where do you get them? Mm -hmm. So I just wanted her to give me a plug so that I can also go and buy my clothes there. Then to my surprise, she told me she makes them herself. And I was like, wow, what do you mean you make them yourself? She's like, yeah, I get the fabrics, I cut them, I stitch them by myself. And I was so blown away. And I was like, you have to teach me because I want to make clothes as well. I want to, I want to be able to create pieces that, like what mm -hmm. you're wearing. She was so kind. She took me to where she buys fabrics. She showed me how to cut. And then the amazing thing is, at the time she used to stitch her dresses by hand. Mm -hmm. And she, oh. yeah, no machines, oh. just by hand. And so she was like, I do it by hand, so you have to learn to do it by hand. Luckily, I had background knowledge from home science, mm -hmm. so I knew a bit mm -hmm. of stitching here and there. So uh, it wasn't hard to catch on with the stitching bit. What was the hardest part was how to actually cut the dress, how to fit the top part to the bottom part. Those were the challenges that I had. But she walked me through and she was so kind. Her name is Wendy. She actually also owns her own fashion brand right now. And um, I'm grateful that she was there to hold my hand and to help me start. I'm just curious. Yeah. Um, what are you studying in campus? Economics and oh statistics. <laughs> 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 we were both doing economics and statistics. <laughs> yeah. I pity your parents. <laughs> <laughs> what is Par African parents have this mentality mm -hmm. that I sent you to go and do economics. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, African parents, we love them. Uh, it wasn't different for my parents, mm -hmm. but the thing I'm grateful for is that my parents were very supportive. They were support. Well, in school, they were supportive of it as you do it as a hobby, 
-hmm. and then you focus on your studies mm -hmm. you finish your studies you go get a job mm -hmm. like everyone else so and I was on board with that because uh, when I started I didn't start it for a business I wasn't mm -hmm. doing it to be in business I was doing mm -hmm. it to be able to create clothes for myself so I was on board I was like yeah I'll do it I'll don't worry I'll finish the degree I'll go get a job as everyone else and mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was the plan and I stuck to the plan for some time mm -hmm. and then um, but my parents were supportive to the extent that my dad bought me my first machine oh yeah so at okay. least I graduated from Bless him. <laughs> <laughs> I graduated from <laughs> stitching with ha my hands uh, mm -hmm. by hand to now at least owning a machine in the house mm -hmm. where I used to now do stitching and then at the time m people around me my friends liked my clothes and they were like oh can you also make for me so I started making for my friends as mm -hmm. well and I started to make a little bit of money but I still didn't think of it as a business for me it was I have extra pocket money yeah oh <laughs> yeah there are these people who think that um, pursuing especially <coughs> embroidery and tailoring mm. is no, it's only it's only job gani. There's a notion that Very people true. have um, when they talk about, you know, there's that notion people had in the past that yeah. if you've not made the cut to go to the university, the most available job to go for mm. go for tailoring. Yes. So how <laughs> different is the perception right now? Well, right now, the perception has changed. I think. But also I have to say it's all about how you brand yourself mm -hmm. because you can choose to brand yourself as a just someone who left school and did not have the credentials and qualifications mm -hmm. to go to uni and so they just settled for mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. but you can look at fashion as art and fashion in the global market is recognized mm -hmm. as art and it has it fetches a lot of money so and I think even to just encourage people who feel like they only did fashion or any other, no, tailoring, mm -hmm. tailoring and other small, small technical courses. For those people who might feel like they were disadvantaged because they could not make the cut, mm -hmm. that's not the case. Because any craft that you have can fetch you whatever amount of money you decide. And so don't despise where you are. And even for me, for some time, I had the same perception. I was like, of course, this fashion thing and this tailoring thing would have to be a side hustle I have to mm -hmm. get a corporate job you know and but that didn't work out like that and now I am in fashion full-time and it's what is my full-time job so at what point did you decide to make it a full-time job um I think when I was leaving uni without knowing though mm -hmm. because uh, when I left when I was leaving now my undergraduates and I was graduating most of my colleagues almost knew they wanted to either work here or there. And for me, I was like, I actually don't know where I want to work. Mm. And I don't think I want to get a regular mm. job. Mm. Uh, I just didn't know it at the time. But I think that was my, in my subconscious. It was always there that mm. I'm not sure I'm going to get a regular job. And so I tried. I tried applying. I did internships and all that. But I was now doing... Uh, I was n I now started like I'd already set it up as a business, although I didn't know the basic principles of running a business at mm -hmm. the time. But I'd started and I was doing it full time. I was making clothes. I had gathered a few a small clientele for myself, mm -hmm. and so I was already beginning to do it. And I think after I graduated, I made up my mind and I was like, I want to give it my a good shot mm -hmm. and see where it can go. So I think at that point is where I made that decision that I want to pursue this as a career. So uh, take us through, how did you start? How what are the challenges you faced? Wow, <clears throat> how did I start? Um, I think my starting point was the story with mm -hmm. the first dress that I made that mm -hmm. I was helped by my friend Wendy. Mm -hmm. uh, that was the first, that was the mm -hmm. start. Mm -hmm. But the business maybe started in around when I was clearing uni. That's when I began. I set up a business. Uh, I had a small stall in downtown. I had one machine. And at that time, I had stopped doing it by myself because all along I would do the tailoring myself. Um, I had 
taught myself, maybe I can say I taught myself the basics of tailoring with the help of many other tailors. I, w I, w I was the type of person that would go to a workshop, at, at a fundi's workshop, and I'm like, can I just sit here and watch you and learn? Mm -hmm. And then I would go with my pieces that I've cut and I've stitched by hand. And I remember one time I met this fundi and he was like, you stitched that by hand? And I was like, yeah. He was like, why? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't have a machine and I want to make dresses, so mm. what do you mean why? So he was kind enough, he allowed me to be using his workshop part-time and he would show me. I think that was where I started to perfect my skill. Mm -hmm. He would uh, teach me how to, the basics of garment construction and then YouTube is a good teacher. Mm -hmm. I taught myself a lot on YouTube and then um, as the orders would come, you realize that you can't do it by yourself. I didn't have enough speed and enough skill at the time, tailoring skill, but with time I sharpened my skills and at that time I discovered something called piecework. So piecework is where you, you get an order, then you subcontract another tailor to do it for you. Mm. So, but you take for him everything, the fabrics, all the accessories needed. So at, at that's how I started my business. Like that's how I think that was my first proper structure for starting my business. I discovered, ah, I can use fundis. So I would get orders and then subcontract another fundi to do it for me. So of course the quality became a bit better and I was able to like, yeah, start like that. Oof. How do you, of course fashion keeps changing. Yes. What, what was fashionable? five years ago might not be what's fashionable right now. Yeah. So how do you keep up with the ever-growing trends? <sighs> you can't. I mm -hmm. think fashion keeps changing, true, but also fashion revolves. I think if you look at what our parents used to wear in the mm -hmm. it 80s or 90s, I don't know mm -hmm. what era that was, those things are coming back and those things are becoming now fashionable. Mm -hmm. So if you were to chase trends, it would be very frustrating and you mm -hmm. can't really keep up. I think what you do is identify what you love to do and what you would want to create in the market and then pursue that. Whether it's trendy or fashionable, you do what you believe in. And I think that's what I'm trying to do with Garments of Grace. I identified that I wanted to do modest fashion. So mo modest fashion is rarely trendy because it's longer hemlines, uh, you're more covered and all that. So with such, you realize you can't really fo follow the regular trends. You have to like create something that is authentic. So maybe an advice to maybe people who are coming up in fashion is to not necessarily follow trends. Of course, observe the patterns because people want to be trendy and then incorporate that with what you would want to create for yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ooh. Do you ever find yourself under pressure to always dress up? <laughs> ah. <laughs> I would say yes and no. Um, so no, because I know I can if I want to. Mm -hmm. I can always make myself a dress. But if there's a function, a, a birthday, a wedding, a graduation, there's pressure because everyone is looking at you like uh, you have to preach. Mm. You have to practice what you preach. So mm. there's always a bit of pressure. But luckily, I think I pull it off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. In line with that same question, yeah. do you ever <coughs> look at women who probably look fashionably awkward and they're like, Tasa ungevai, ti ungevai kitu ingine or something? Well, um, I think I am, I think I don't do that. Mm -hmm. um, when I look at my own fashion journey, Mm -hmm. There are times I would see older pictures of what I thought was fashionable and I would cringe at myself, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, like, you know I can't <laughs> believe I thought <laughs> that, was, that was fashionable. And so I think coming from that and also seeing how year in, year out, something that I thought was fashionable this year, it's not fashionable the next year. I think it maybe allows me to have more grace for people. But then there are maybe what I look at sometimes and I'm like, ooh, is I wish people would mm -hmm. uh, wear more fitted clothes. Like mm -hmm. just wear something that is, don't wear something that's too baggy. Don't wear something that's too, too tight. Like I think those are the areas mm -hmm. where I'm a bit judgmental when it mm -hmm. comes to fashion. I'm like, just get the right size because you'd be surprised. Anything can look nice as long as you have the right, you want the right size. 
how do you find the balance between your personal life yeah. and your work life? Um, is there, can you really find balance? Uh, I think I love what I do. I really mm. do. I could do it. I could do it 24 hours, mm. honestly. Um, there are times I'm, I'm left at work late. Times I'm, it's at night and I have to like do research. I'm just looking at what's happening in the fashion world. So I really enjoy it. I think so. It, it doesn't feel, a lot of times it doesn't feel like work. Uh, but how I balance is maybe, honestly, I can't say I've figured out how to balance it. Mm. And it's, it's really a big part of my life right now. But also maybe having structures around your life, knowing when to work, when to stop working, that also helps a bit. But generally, it do, I don't feel like it's strenuous. How do you help ladies become fashionably sensible, sensitive? Wow. Sensitive in what way? Sorry. Um, see, the way you probably, when you said you don't judge. Yes. Uh, when you don't judge someone based yeah. on how they're dressed. Yes. Uh, but they, you meet someone. Like now, when I when I woke up and I realized I was interviewing, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I started thinking, no, what, what, what do I wear? wear? What do I? She will come there and look at me. Oh she'll no! Think, <laughs> oh, I never knew. Did you have to pay that with that? You know. So yeah. how do you help women mm -hmm. who you meet out there and you feel like we could do a bit with your fashion? Uh, how do I know? do it? Yeah. So how do you do it? I. First of all, I don't think I put myself out there like that. Mm -hmm. But what I would say is whenever someone now comes onto our platform, either mm -hmm. uh, our Instagram page or when someone now comes to our shop and now I have mm -hmm. the opportunity to interact with them, mm -hmm. I think for me, first of all, anyone who, who has interacted with me and they're like, oh, I don't think this would look nice on me, I usually tell them, I think anything can look nice on anyone, provided you get the right size. I really believe in that. Uh, concept of just get what is the right size for you and then from there we we identify what do you like what mm. don't you like there are people who are like I don't like showing my hands I'm like okay great how can you then wear sleeves that will st and you'll still look nice there are people who are like I like my dresses a bit shorter I'm like okay let's find a sweet spot that you're also not indecent I like them long you know so mm. I just try and meet people at their point of need and see how to improve that or work around that that that, brought, that brings me to <coughs> this aspect of of course this is a women's segment yes there's a woman out there we we have been hearing that uh, there are body certain body shapes that require certain body clothes yeah. you know you're being told come on a jola kakama fanta chumba ya fanta orange yeah, was a straight, and you know you don't have the figure to do the straight, mm -hmm. uh, straight clothes. So do you, do you, do you have something, a sort of guidance? I don't know. Probably because this is a women's show, and someone is sitting there and thinking, okay, can she probably touch on what mm. different body, body, body sizes, body sizes people can do? You know, probably yeah. in as much as you are, um, you advocate for. You, as you've said, you believe that everyone can wear anything so long as you get the right side. Yeah. But there's that outfit that a plus size mm. would wear that, that a petite person would look very awkward. Would look okay. Yeah. So um, also just to be sensitive to people's mm. different body shapes and sizes because mm -hmm. I think the topic of a woman's body is very sen <laughs> It's a very yeah. sensitive topic. Yeah. And I think also my personality, I'm not very confrontational. I'm not... Your, 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 mm. This is your body type, so this is what you need <laughs> to dress. And that paired with the fact that I have made different types of outfits over the course mm. of time. Mm. I've made the straight ones, the A-line ones, I've done different type of things. And I've come to the conclusion that anything can look good on anyone. People come to my, maybe people come to the workshop and they're like, um, I'm a short girl, so I can't wear maxi dresses. Then I ask them, have you tried, you know, have mm. you tried or have you just excluded yourself mm. and said that I'm a short girl, I can't wear mm. maxi dresses. Mm. I've had like maybe f around five women, mm. ladies come to the shop and they're like, I'm a short girl, I can't wear maxi dresses. I'm like, I, I get that, but let's try, just wear one. And we see, and they actually wear mm -hmm. and they're like, oh wow, it actually looks good on me. So my conclusion is different body types, how do you dress them? 
identify what you're most comfortable in. I won't tell you what to wear because what I tell you to wear might not be comfortable for you, but look for what you feel most comfortable in and then gravitate towards styles that are like that. Maybe one time you wore an A-line dress and you felt, oh, today I was not conscious about my my hips, I was not conscious about my tummy or anything like that. Then look for more dresses that are in line with what you, you, what you felt most comfortable in. But in an effort to feel comfortable, don't look for oversized things or tight mm. things, but look for the thing that you felt most comfortable in and then gravitate, maybe build your style around that style. Yeah. Oh, wow. Hmm. Yeah. Do you, what are the sum, some of the challenges you have currently yeah. now that you are a grown brand? Wow. Um, I think the challenges of a business, mm, when school, apart from maybe the business courses, mm -hmm. in school you're not equipped to be an entrepreneur. You're mm -hmm. not taught. You're given theoretical, uh, what do I call it? Everything is theoretical. Mm -hmm. there's, no, there's no practicality. And even for people who maybe do business administration or BCom or anything. I don't even know which business courses are offered, <laughs> but anyone who studied maybe a business course, you will come to the market field and find that things are actually, I don't, I don't want to say different because I'm, I'm not aware that they are different, but you'll find that the practicality of it is different from what you are taught. And so you have to constantly teach yourself. And I, I think I was pushed into the business field. As I've told you, I didn't mm -hmm. come into this thinking I would make a business out of it. I just thought, at best, I'll have nice clothes, I'll, which I'll be making for myself. And then now I'm building a business around that. Mm -hmm. And so coming from a background of not being trained as an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. my, my biggest challenge is there are so many things that I don't know. And perhaps if I knew better, I would be further mm -hmm. in business. So that's a challenge, the lack of knowledge. And so I'm always trying to look for videos online, trying to look for people who are in business and find out mm -hmm. what it is that they're doing. But that, that disconnect, the lack of knowledge can be a big mm -hmm. challenge, yeah. Oof. That, that makes me, like something I've just thought about right yeah. now as, yeah. we, as we are talking. Um, men, the, the aspect of men is not being talked about in the fashion space. Mm -hmm. And right now you will realize that we have male, male models yes. and you know men are becoming more conscious, yeah. conscious about fashion, fashion Very and, true. and the way they color coordinate. Mm. You, you know, nowadays you'll find a man in a red suit and a green suit yeah. and you know. A and pink the, suit. Exactly. Yeah. What's, what's your take? Um, in about men in fashion? Yes, men in fashion. There was, I read an article the other day, and uh, this uh, is someone who maybe who does business and marketing, and they were saying in 2023, if she was to start a fashion business, she would do men's fashion. And then I had a conversation with someone else who said if they were to do fashion, they would also do, they would also do male fashion because they feel that it is ignored and that men are always looking for nice things. I've not interacted with a lot of men fashion-wise to know what their problems mm -hmm. are. But what I think is that for you to build a good business, you need to identify the challenges. And so the article that I was referring to said that she would do men's fashion and she would focus on the shorter men because they have the most challenges finding the right fits. So I think men's fashion is an untapped, is largely untapped. And most of them, I think, buy ready, ready-made clothes. I know a few people in in the industry who do who focus on male mm -hmm. fashion, but I think it's it's an area that can be touched on. Yeah. You see the way um, nowadays, um, especially CEOs, famous people yeah. have have com have um, communication, PR, brand yes. managers, image, you branding, exactly. those things. Do you yeah. feel like it's necessary for the same people to have fashion, um, I don't know how yes. to call them. I don't know how to call you. you know? Yeah, consult fa fa fashion e consultant yes. or something. And they, there's a niche. I don't know if, I don't know how well known it is, but there is the image branding bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then uh, I think that one now also touches on fashion, a bit on fashion. 
So I think it's there, but I don't think a lot of people have embraced it. But it's something that is up and coming and people can embrace it. How important it. do you f think it is? Image branding, I think it's very important because first, first impressions, people say that first impressions are everything. Mm -hmm. So it's important to how you present yourself because that's sometimes you'll be in a situation where all that people get to see and know about you is how you look. They'll not get to hear you. They'll not get to know how brilliant you are and mm. all that. So how you present yourself is definitely very important. Mm. Yeah. So CEOs start looking for brand, what do you call it? Image consultants. Image consultants. <laughs> <laughs> Image consultants. Yeah, for sure. Um, hmm. There's something I wanted to ask you mm. and it's almost, it's almost disappearing. Mm -hmm. What do you wish they told you before you began this journey? Wow, everything. <laughs> I wish I was told that it's going to be difficult. Mm -hmm. But anyway, everything in life is not easy. Mm -hmm. So I, th I think that one I should have figured out on my own. <laughs> I wish um, they told me that when you get into business, learn the basics of running a business first. Because there are some years there, uh, even before now, I think I've shared up until where how I started mm -hmm. and then now I've not shared the story about Garments of Grace but there was a there was some years you there can where share. yeah I can share okay mm. there was some years there where I didn't fully understand the mm. basics of running a business and as much as you have the talent and the skill mm -hmm. and I think that's where it comes in you might you may have the talent and the skill mm. but if you want to use your talent and, and your skill to make money then you have to teach yourself the basics of, a, of running a business mm. or if you don't have the time to do that and you have the capacity to do that then hire someone who has the basics to do it but at the end of the day even you as the talent you as the one with the skill you need to also have those basics so I wish I was told that coming into this mm. yeah wow yeah that you should have been more prepared should have been more prepared starting. yeah because business is it just doesn't happen. It's mm. a science. It, it has principles that you follow. It has do this, then do this. This is how you manage your money. This is how you, this is how you market. This is, you know, there are so many aspects of a business, mm. of running a business and growing it, not just running it, because I think we all want growth. So there's all that. And so that one I should have been prepared but now I'm learning for myself. <laughs> <laughs> what would you tell a young fashion um, entrepreneur coming up? Yeah. Lady, man, you know. I would tell them that um, they are doing the right thing, first of all, for pursuing their dreams. Mm -hmm. um, their dreams are valid. No dream is too small and no job is too small. Again, to maybe take us back to the conversation we're talking about how mm. you feel like you didn't make the cuts and mm. so you had to do a small course. There's, mm. n there's no such thing. No job is too small. As long as it's a gift that God gave you, it can make room for you and it can grow to lengths and depths that you didn't imagine. So keep pushing, teach yourself everything that you need to learn about running a business, about your, uh, about your skill, become the best at what you do mm. uh, don't stop until um don't stop until you're proud but also most importantly um i've been listening to some personal development teachings and they were saying when it comes to your value and your skill mm. don't stop until your audience is kings so until you're serving kings that's when you know that you've sharpened your gift mm. to the best of your ability so don't stop keep pushing yeah oh wow yeah as we bring this conversation to a close um of course you've told me what would you wish they told you what yeah. would you have what would you tell your younger self what would i tell my younger self um wow i would tell my younger self that i would thank her for starting mm -hmm. the journey because mm -hmm. it is my younger self that started the journey for me mm -hmm. i would really thank her for being bold um, in the face of uncertainty and it takes a level of 